Out of all the moments in the vice presidential debate, the part that I want to bring the most attention to is toward the end when uh, Mike Pence is asked if him and Trump will agree to peacefully transfer power if they lose. Let's watch what Mike Pence had to say at this point. Power after the election. If Vice President Biden is declared the winner and President Trump refuses to accept a peaceful transfer of power, what would be your role and responsibility as Vice President? What would you personally do? You have two minutes. Well, Susan, first and foremost, I think we're going to win this election. Because while uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris rattle off a long litany of the establishment in Washington, D.C., an establishment that Joe Biden's been a part of for 47 years, President Donald Trump is has launched a movement of everyday Americans from every walk of life. And uh, I have every confidence that those, those same Americans that delivered that historic victory in 2016, they see this president's record where we rebuild our military. We revived our economy through tax cuts and rolling back regulation, fighting for fair trade, unleashing American energy. We appointed conservatives to our federal courts at every level. And, and we stood with the men and women of law enforcement every single day. And I think... I think that movement of Americans has only grown stronger in the last four years. But when you talk about accepting the outcome of the election, um, I, I must tell you, uh, Senator, your party has spent the last three and a half years trying to overturn the results of the last election. And it's amazing. When Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, the FBI actually spied on President Trump and my campaign. I mean, there were documents released this week that the CIA actually made a referral uh, to the FBI documenting that those allegations were coming from the Hillary Clinton campaign. And, of course, we've all seen the avalanche, the, what, what you put the country through for, for the better part of, of three years until it was found that there was no obstruction, no collusion, case closed. And then, Senator Harris, you and your colleagues in the, in the Congress – tried to impeach the president of the United States over a phone call. And now Hillary Clinton has actually said to Joe Biden that under, in her words, under no circumstances should he concede the election. So let me just say, I think we're going to win this election. President Trump and I are fighting every day in courthouses to prevent Joe Biden and Kamala Harris from changing the rules and creating this universal mail-in voting that will create a massive opportunity for voter fraud. And we have a free and fair election. Uh, we know we're going to have confidence in it. And I believe in all my heart that President Donald Trump's going to be reelected for four more years. You know, I've, uh, I've asked, I've written all... With his response, it seems pretty clear that he dodged the question. He doesn't give a direct answer on if hypothetically they were to lose, if they would concede power. And this is where really the moderator should do a better job in really trying to pinpoint and just narrow in and say, just answer that question. If you lose, will you concede power? But even if she would have asked it, he probably would have just kept dodging it and wouldn't have given a direct answer. Now, keep in mind, he has hands that are tied at this point. He has to basically go along with what Trump wants. And so even if he didn't really believe that they should try to fight if they were to lose, he's not going to say that on national TV. But his answer should alarm reasonable people across the country. If George Bush... He tried to argue that in 2004, if Obama answered in 2012, as they were uh, getting close to the elections that helped them stay in power and uh, win a second term, there would be people all over the country that were really alarmed and were saying that it goes against the Constitution. Him saying that her party tried to impeach him over a phone call it's really convenient that he doesn't go into the details of that phone call and the fact that Trump asked the president of Ukraine to announce a big investigation into Biden just so that he could hurt them or just so he could hurt Biden politically. Pence doesn't bring that up because it would hurt any validity that he has and it would hurt the points that he's trying to argue. Saying that her party has spent the last three and a half years overturning results. That makes it seem as if it's all like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and that it has nothing to do with the intelligence agencies who are alarmed with a lot of the things uh, that have happened with the 
meeting that went down between Don Jr. and I believe it was a Russian official. Um, the communications with Rudy Giuliani and Russian oligarchs, the fact that he has business ties with Russia, uh, a lot of that still hasn't been investigated. It wasn't really looked at in the Mueller report, just the financial aspect of Trump with Russia. So notice Pence completely just dodges the question, doesn't give a direct answer, just talks about how he's confident they're going to win, uh, basically implying that, like Trump said, that if they lose, it's because the entire election was rigged. That's authoritarianism. Out of all of the criticisms uh, for Trump and Pence about racism or homophobia, the idea of authoritarianism and staying in power regardless of what the American people vote, that should be the most alarming out of anything up to this point.